Hello there everyone and welcome back to Old World Blues. I'm your host, Max and Expedition. Level. We've got to talk about checking on Elric. Making your way down the access corridor towards the bunker storage rooms, Andrew clenches and unclenches her hands inside the powered armor. She knows the routine is important to keep herself steady, but Lowe's having to check in on every little detail. Before all this, she was a leader in battle, not a babysitter for the scribes. Thankfully, the T-51B power armor keeps her dour expression from view as she passes by saluting brothers and nodding to them as she continues on to her destination. Slapping her gauntlet against the open switch and stepping through the doorway, she can hear the sound of raised voices in the storage room. Glancing over the over, she noticed two scraps arguing by one of the tables with armor and laser rifles laid out on them. Turning her attention from them, she sees a man she came on to check on, Proctor Elric. The Proctor is sitting behind a desk by the far wall, a terminal screen lighting up his aged features green in the dim lighting, striding forward. Her boots clanged against the metal. The Proctor looks up and over at the two scribes by the table with a sour expression before slowly getting to his feet and greeting Andrea. Paladin Commander here for the daily count. Shaking his head, Elric goes on to say, I understand your need to check in on things, but surely weekly inspection would accomplish the same thing. Andrea's frown deepens in response to his words, her voice harsh as it barks out of the helmet speakers. If this is that severe of an interruption, Proctor, then I suggest you give me your report quickly and efficiently. Then you can get back to your duties. We all have the rules to fill, even if we don't like them. The argument. Andrea sees Elric stiffen, but his eyes never waver, and then she sighs internally. Helmet speakers crackling to life again. I have more to do today than argue with you, Proctor. Tell me the daily count, and also, she says before gesturing to her left, if you could explain to me why they're arguing about, or what they're arguing about. Elric said turns from her helmet to the pair of scribes who have still been arguing by the table for the entire conversation. It is count as 28 laser rifles and 8 suits of power armor. As for those two, they propose that we use experimental schematics and test the schematics of that. We brought from us with from Lost Hills. Brought with us. They should allow us to produce and maintain more advanced suits of power armor, or the same, but with energy weapons. Proctor Elric shakes his head before going on. The problem is that they can agree that we should use them given our situation, but can't agree which to use. Without the resources or the skilled manpower to use both, it's not an easy decision for them. Turning a helmeted gaze back to the Proctor, she asks Anne, You're their senior, surely you have your own opinion. Alec shakes his head and sighs as his gaze finally turning down and away from Brixley. To tell the truth worth my workload, I've ignored them for the most part. Running hand through his graying hair, he mutters, I didn't think it was too important. Andrew can tell the Proctor is disinterested in this as it was with most mundane tasks and speaks up after a few mere moments of contemplation. Tell them our power armor could use an edge, more reliability and research speed. Tell them our energy weapons could use an edge, more research speed, reliability. I prefer tell them our power armor could use an edge. So right now we're probably going to go and do a uh, kind of a time lapse to get through most of the stuff. Um, I already did Robot City and War, but Robot's no longer the, no longer one of the streets of this destroyed city, and the surrounding settlements are all under our protection. And for Doki's troll, we'll probably just I'll just leave it on the screen as it's going by in the time lapse and leave it for a while, so you can pause and read it if you like. Our second chance will not be beaten back this time. We'll take Doxy for ourselves and the ones who hold it down to the graves. Maybe we can complete our mission as well, but we'll see. Um, well, Austrian military industry. Our initial expansion into the walls were minimal, besides approaching wasteland settlements in the area. Now that we have a need of a functioning arms industry, it's time to put effort into setting our interests up there. The next generation. Ooh, drill sergeant's not bad. More arms workshops would be very good to get, though. Field exercises, refined warfare, required garrisons go down, which is very good, too. City of Denver. Well, that would be bad. Remove hangdog defeat, that'd be good, too. It's finally ours after clearing out the stragglers and scavengers of Brother. Now is Denver and it's all riches. Old soldiers. Ooh. Steel versus iron. War games with hummingbirds. That's interesting as well. Um, so we'll do all that stuff. Old lessons is not bad too. Also, um, one of the comments was, I love it when the algorithm gives me good content from a small creator instead of more garbage from trending pages. So thank you very much for the kind comments. And it looks like Lanius is still just hanging out before he comes up north and tries to kill us off. And also, I think this is bugged because the hang dogs are no longer at war with the dog with uh, the warden. I don't think they should be at peace. I could be very wrong though, but it's going to take some time for us to get up to 25 divisions. Um, or at least relatively close, because I just want to just, you know, hold the line and then make an encirclement and encirclement and encirclement and encirclement. But we'll see when we get there.
fresh faces, fresh recruits, which is from the focus of uh, the next generation. The eager, fresh faced recruits, hard faced veterans have trained them. Before Andrew uh, stood, lines of wastelanders standing in rows at attention. Each one of them was clad in iron, uh, recon arm, armor, assigned to initiates, and each one of them was stealing glances at her armor when they got a chance. Andrew pretended not to notice. Having silently strode back and forth in front of them twice now, she finally stood at a central position, standing in full view of the rows of initiates. The Hermold speaker crocodile laughed as she addressed them. I'm Andrew Brooksley. You'll refer to me from here on as Paladin Commander. Is that clear? The initiates were responsible for the raptures and immediate. Yes, Paladin Commander. And you allowed there to be a short pause and continue. You are all trash. Putrid little waist center filth clad in armor far nicer than you deserve. She gave pause for fact. But you'll fix that. You'll be broken down into tiny pieces and rebuild into something great. Knights, paladin scouts, real cold-blooded god darn killers. Not every one of you will make it, but those who will do will join a brother greater than anything you've ever been part of. Do I make myself clear? Yes, paladin commander. Field exercises. Setting aside time to have our forces train will help our tactics and our morale. Also, this is just auto-bypass after we take out Dog City, so... And we still haven't gotten done, uh, Robot City no more, but whatever. City of Denver. It's finally ours after clearing out the stragglers and scavengers, as I read earlier. The brothers now is Denver, it's all rich, all of its riches. Memorial. Um, say B. I would like that research slot. Where was that? What was that? Denver's Warden. More compliance, less resistance. A sophisticated electronics. A sophisticated robot technology. Ooh. Arms workshops, too. That's pretty decent, not gonna lie. Um, hummingbirds, chain choir focus, which I think the chain choir actually has these unique focus too, too. It's kind of cool actually. Iron scraps. Wait, what is this? Iron alliance resources. Oh, all core lands. Yeah, we're trying. We're already justifying them. Also, Lannis is trying to justify on us, but I'm going to use cons commands to make sure that we don't have to go to war with them. So, Wall Street militia. Due to how close Wall Street is to our main bunker, we can effectively patrol to the settlements with a fraction of the forces normally required in exchange for waste centers from the region, helping with their garrisons abroad. So that'll be good. Power armor developments. Well, armor served as well on the journey to Colorado can always be better. Armor to the safeguard of hearts. Power armor to sell our bread and butter, the symbol of brotherhood. Weapons to strike down our foes. Laser weapons might not be seen as weapons beyond comprehension by the waste center of our day, but they still produce results regardless of understanding. Underground advanced material processing. Expanding the maximum button underground to sort and th uh, sort through to store and sort through the tech salvage we well, find. Hopefully, no one decides to do something dumb and uh, try to attack us and kill us. So. I got a war with these guys, but uh, they're not joining the war, which is good to see, because there's no way in the world we'd actually be able to beat them right now, which, which kind of really sucks, but whatever. Um, I'll keep doing what we're doing right now. As uh, we're still trying to do, get the local H&H &H tool factory running again, as well as drive Doki away. The headquarters of this Doki Doki has been found. We need to focus her, uh, force it from the city along with the robots gathered around for her, around her for this to end. So, yeah, we're struggling here a little bit, but you know, what else is new? Um, inspirational, mysterious, stranger's good. Get some awareness. Get a lot of awareness, actually. It'd be very good, too. What are the losses like currently? A thousand? That's not bad. A thousand is not bad at all. Um, more infantry organization? Let's do some of this. I always do that one. I never do the quantity. Oh, crap. Come on. Come on, guys. We gotta get all the way to Holyoke as well. So. Go to war with us? That's not good. That's pretty nice, though. You guys can force it. I'm happy to bust over there within a month, so. Come on. You got plenty of political power, though. That's pretty nice. My god, are they trying to hold out, though? Weapons strike down our foes, city of Denver. Well, do this one first. We're almost there. Almost. Oh, come on. Make sure they don't move. Oh, yo. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's going to take too long. defense, yeah. Into battle once again. Well, come on. Andrew felt the doubt rising within her again as she stepped into her armor, securing the gauntlets and double-checking the seals of the T-51B. Our armor suit she had grown so accustomed to her thoughts raced. 
Let's be the greatest challenge yet. She knew this was all riding on her decision making and strategy. The upcoming weeks and months, we decide the fate of Colorado or the brothers and so many more. Picking up the helmet in a gauntlet of hand, she catches herself gazing into the visor staring back up at her. Setting her jaw and placing the helmet over and onto her head, she thinks to herself, No, I was right. I will lead us through this. This Venice will not be the end of us. Securing the helmet in place and turning to the door out of her quarters, grabbing the rifle and off, kit off the wall mount. Off to war, off to victory, I will not fail. That is so stupid. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm going to use cons commands for I'm definitely using cons commands for that. That should not be like that at all. So, we're going to kill these guys off. I'm just going to kill these guys off. And, uh, yeah, we're going to kind of redo that part. Because that's really stupid. Airship down. On the push from the Maxim, Maxim Bunker, Paladin stumbled upon a very peculiar find. Old soldiers, not the regular ghoul settlements we expect. But these ones are advanced. Or, or organized, have a tactical advantage. Uh, tactics. Jesus Christ, I can't read. An ancient, non standard equipment, and even some speak Chinese. Interesting. Steel versus iron. Oh, well, well, thanks for now having this come up. Are you kidding me? Power armor raider mercenary. Certainly a unique combo. Not to be taken lightly, but also cannot be allowed to stand in your way. Oh, lesson. So I can't do that one either, so. Which kind of sucks. I ship down. We'll do this one as well. Uh, pass revealed. Well, I didn't do anything. City of Denver's not bad either, so. Well, Denver Union do. Station. Heads up, everyone. We're almost there. Andrea announced to her brothers. She was leading a force back to the site of the expedition's greatest failure, and she wasn't sure what to expect. When they had first arrived in the city, Denver's Union Station seemed like a perfect location for them to settle into. Pre-war bomb shelters are in the main building in a central location with easy access to the rest of the city. Also a perfect trap, for when the hangdogs finally revealed themselves in force, they poured in from every direction at once. Even with the hangdogs routed and the city being swept clean of the bastards, Andrew couldn't help but grip her rifle tighter as she a shiver runs up her spine. Sweeping the laser rifle's muzzle back and forth as the end of the platform, she hears audible gasps and a few more, more than a few curses, spotted from the helmet speakers of those coming in behind her. Andrew steals herself in order to focus we haven't cleared the area yet. Her voice remained level and calm, but inside she burned with anger to the bodies. The hangdogs uh, had attacked in numbers. First, a wave of dynamite throwing by, followed by a massive charge supported by their hounds. Andrew was lucky enough to be in her armor when the attack came inside the station itself, but the brothers who had been outside on the open air platforms were disoriented and overwhelmed before being torn to pieces. In some cases, literally, with the massive hounds pulling and holding down men and women in their armor while the raiders went to work, cracking open the shells and butchering the new threat to their citywide dominance. Scattered about the battle scarred platforms or bodies or pieces of them. Andrew can see these two dozen power armored figures. Some are trapped under the pieces of the stations that fell on their bodies, but the rest are propped up in various positions of sitting or standing. Scrawled on their armor are symbols of the hangdogs, howling men and dogs, crudely drawn but recognizable. A sign to end who came through here, this that was their doing, Andrew thinks to herself, teeth grinding together as her fury reaches a peak. She wasn't sure they would find their fallen brothers here or they would have to scour the city for the hollow tags. The second option would be even preferable to the site. Collect them all of them, scrap those effing drawings off their armor and try to identify them. Third squad with me, we're going to go into the station. Andrea orders before stomping towards the entrance of the Union Station. Are there any questions about it before this is settled? It? There wouldn't be no trace of the hangdogs left in Colorado when they claimed it. I won't allow them to get away with it. any of this. Andrea fumes herself, a desperate defense. Oh my gosh. The grand and ornate doors of the station were in poor condition when the expedition arrived, and they didn't keep the hangdogs out for long. Stepping over the rubble strewn entrance, Andrea sweeps in the inside with a weapon and the squad moving in behind her. She remembers of a panic when the exp explosion started. The rush to join the fight outside, the shocking speed of the raiders as they reached the building entrances, and windows before most of the brotherhood had reacted. Andrea had only unslung a rifle when another volley of dynamite was thrown into the station itself, not particularly deadly to those in powered armor, but those without protective shell were blasted away or to pieces. Calling out for the brothers around her to return fire, she had pushed forward, using the bulk of her armor to shield those behind her. Andrew paused in her recollection to crouch down and retrieve a drained microfusion cell from the ground, holding it between her fingers. For all the firepower they could bring to bear, even as unorganized as they were, it wasn't enough. The brothers around her opened up with everything they had, laser, plasma, even some explosive weapons thrown or launched from weapons. Sheer ferocity went out over them, as Andrew and the others in our armor, power armor uh, had tried to shield the wounded, and the howling raiders had pushed into the station with their hounds. It only took a few moments of frantic firing for the desperate defense to turn to a brawl, the retreat. Yeah. Clenching the microfusion cell in her hand, Andrea can almost see flashes of the fight before her eyes. The scribe behind her and Nathan had been hit with a shrapnel during the initial volley. Andrew's weapon was out of ammo, but as she hit the eject under current cell, four men were on her, trying to topple her with her weight and momentum. The laser rifle was knocked out of her grip while she was struggling to stay standing. Shouting in anger, she had punched the first one in a screaming face, the armored gauntlet slamming into his mouth and setting them spinning with a broken jaw. Pushing and lashing out of the other three she had heard. Even through the roar of combat around her, the screams from Nathan, with another shove, which sent her attackers staggering away, she had glanced back to the scrap on the ground. One of the hounds had him by the throat as she struggled to fight it off before our loud signaling crunch his neck was snapped. A drill pumping through her body, she kicked the dog away, singing it, skittering with a yelp. All around her were the screams of the fighting, the wounded, and the dying drowned out by all but one voice, and Elder Cameron, using his suit speakers to shout an order that made Andrew's hot blood run hot blood run ice cold. Retreat was the order she heard, and the brothers who started to follow their leader out of the station, shooting, hacking, punching, kicking, doing whatever they could to carve a path. 
Andrew shakes her head back and forth as clear before glancing down at the microfusion cell. Opening her hand, she sees her hand unconsciously clenching and, and has crushed the outer casing. She drops it to the floor where she had left all those months ago. They've taken the revenge for everyone they lost. This will be their main base in Denver again to erase the history of failure here they won't fall again. Her plan had worked and she must lead her brothers to complete their original mission. Colorado will be ours. Also, I do apologize. Like when we, I took out Iron Alliance and that took way too long. God, I hate Iron Alliance sometimes. But then, Linus's cohort capitulated too, so I'm not, I don't understand. So I did not annex them, because we need to have a fair fight with them at the very least. So I'm re-justifying on Lanius, just to get to that point. Um, but, uh, yeah, they just capitulated too. So Lanius was subservient to Iron Alliance, so I don't, I'm not sure how that worked, but it is what it is. As, what are we doing? Uh, see, Robot City no more. City exploitation. Denver is a massive city. Just taking it isn't enough. We need to make it ours forever. Wealth of the past. A pre war city should have plenty of interesting discoveries, and with a greater understanding, we can surely pick up plenty of the previous owners missed. Um, so, Colorado, over there. Oh, yeah, I'll do that one. With Denver conquered, and our fallen brothers and sisters avenged, we can have regain for us forever. Colorado will be ours now and forever. We more power, armor, attack, defense, and speed. Nice. And every Colorado state we get a claim on, which is very good as well. Um, other than that, we did grab this person for more factory output and military construction speed. Or no, maybe not. No, it's knighthood, so more resistance and stuff like that. Because I want to see you can get more cores and stuff like that, so... That's pretty much what we'll be working on. Um, let's go and save real quick, because I was disappointed that... Why, why would Lanny's cohort... You can see it, I did it off screen. When I was finished, finally finished these guys off uh, up there, but like... Why did these guys capitulate as well? Oh, they're not... Because I know they're going to attack us like crazy and whatnot, you know, whatever. Oh, crap, they're fighting the entire legion. Well, shnikes. That's so stupid. I think this, this there's a few bugs here still. So, yeah, there's a few bugs. Yeah, a few bugs. So now they're really going to be attacking like crazy. So we got some expedition, expeditionaries from the NCR, which is nice. We can't edit these divisions. They're 16 combos with recon, which is not bad. Uh, we also got some other divisions called, uh, from the... This stuff. Hire workers to operate the forges. Well, the slaves who operated the manager escaped during the chaos of the conquest. The forges of the Iron Alliance are still mostly intact. Hiring on some waste centers to process the raw material that remains in New Sterling could give us a boost to our industry while stockpiles last. So, it gave us two arms workshops and two civilian workshops, which was really nice. Um, other than that, though, like, it will be removed too. But uh, we, there's there were like three decisions here to get like one power armor unit each, and that's what these guys came from. So, since we can't edit these divisions, but I'm not too worried about this now since. Well, we can mostly hold the line. Our divisions are not too bad. Uh, we could probably edit these guys a little bit more. I mean, these are 20 combat width. No, nothing on them, really. Um, spec Ops, I'm not going to spec Ops for this campaign. Doesn't make any sense, too. These guys are only 10 combat width, too, so. We got a crap ton of army XP. And we should have air superiority as well, maybe. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, we got plenty of planes. Plenty of planes. Um, I want to make. Because we still have to edit stuff on these infantry divisions, let's just max out infantry as best we can, so... But, you know what, let's go just do this. Only 10 combo with, not good enough, really. Only cost 2. Make them at least 18. There you go. Gonna cost more, oh, manpower that we don't have. Well, shnikes. Because we need core more stuff as well, that would definitely help out, like, up that over there. But we can raise the conscription level knights. We're gonna lose about... 1, 2, 2... 1% attack and defense, that's not bad. It's gonna, it's gonna also not hurt special force capacity multiplier, which is pretty good. Or just to build a little more, but that's alright. And we're about to get more put apart anyway, so. Or more cores, anyways. I mean, here it is. Losses, 1,000. Oh, I guess the NCR is fighting them, too. Oh, that's not bad. Actually, maybe we we'll do something here then. Doki Stroll. Robot City. The invasion of this monument to a robotic friendship had gone better than expected, mostly left alone by neighboring powers. The city had been ill prepared for the prolonged conflict with a dedicated military force. The robots had either been routed, destroyed, or deactivated, near systematically in the process, some of them being pressed into labor roles, whilst others were fit for jobs like battle for support and logistics. As Andrea walked through the halls of Doki's chamber, she felt a pang of guilt. Some of the robotic chassis lifelessly slumped against the wall, names drawn on them were colorful, almost artistic depictions of flowers, her heart for Doki herself. On the one hand, it could be just all faulty programming resultant from exposure to an unstable artificial intelligence. On the other, these could have been close as people as tin cans can get. The worrying thought was one she gave little attention. The implication was far too troubling. As Brickley stepped into Doki's chambers, she saw Proctor Elbrick hunched over the terminal. The now escaped AI had been housing. Hello, Proctor. Proctor George Elbrick, an old dude scribe who's been sent with expedition with the goal of categorizing, sorting, and setting the wealth of technology located in Denver. <clears throat> as the Denver mission was a complete failure, he had been rejected or rele relegated. To the chapter headquarter uh, master. This was not a role he enjoyed, and it was often either crabby, distracted, or distractedly crabby. 
though as you focus on in on the dark red glow at Doki Terminal, and you sense a hint of happiness. This has been the first chance you've been studying something more advanced than a laser pistol, and instead overheat down. You barely even noticed Andrew enter until she spoke, at which point he stood up a bit straighter, clearing his straw and motioning down at the terminal, rubbing his beard with his free hand. Good morning, Paladin Commander. This terminal is, oh, my bad, is incredibly unique. It's been modified many times over, especially in the RAM and CPU department. We can use it for calculations related to research or production, but there's one issue. Yes, Proctor? <clears throat> he shifted his shoulders a bit, letting out a soft, a somber huff. Something about that little AI was, uh, was important to how it works. Now that she's gone, I don't expect the computer has a long lifespan. It would be overheated junk before long. And impasse, it seems. What to do with this little terminal? Go to the scribes. Doki Doki Scientific Nomenclature Club. Manufacturers? Um... I don't like it. I don't care for either one. Let's go with the scribes. Memorial, though. Andrew placed her hand against the etched metal plaque. <clears throat> the first of them had arrived from Axum Bunker yesterday, ordered by her to record the names of all those brothers who had fallen at Union Station. There will be three in total placed above the inner doors of the terminal. Um, inside the power armor, Andrew can only stare as her fingers move down the list and hover over a few select names. She just wouldn't make the memories any less painful, but she can take comfort in knowing that they won't be forgotten and wouldn't be right to forget. Elder of us asked behind her. Turn to her, she can see a knight, Chris, to her left. What is it, knight? Quickly adopting a salute, Chris says that Dan Rivers is out on the platform's elder and he wishes to speak with you. Now you know the man Andrew tells him, thank you, knight. Dismissed. Marching to the doors leading out of the terminal and pushing them open, she can see Dan across the train yard. As soon as he sees her, the man begins waving in her direction. What he has come up with now, I wonder. Andrew thinks to herself as she picks her way through the still damaged sections of the Union Station. Keep the city afloat. And wealth of the past. A pretty worth city sure plenty of interesting discoveries, and with our greater understanding, we can surely pick up plenty of the previous owners missed. The New Denver. Slow down, Dan. Andrew nearly pleased with the traitor the moment she got within earshot. Rivers had talked like he was more of a machine than man. He'd only taken a breath once in the past minute, explaining all his rejuvenation projects. As always, the present smile only widens as he says, Sorry, but there's so much to do. Reaching down and taking a canteen from his vest pocket, he takes a swig before going on. Denver in the hands of your people is a good start, but now you need to make it yours, not just ruling over the scrap pile, but making it something worth holding on to beyond the salvage. Andrew holds up a hand and says, I understand you have plans, but I can't allow certain stuff just to be taken away by anybody who finds it. We're the Brotherhood. We protect humanity from the dangers of technology. <clears throat> Dan waves the flask in a dismissive gesture and says, Yes, yes, I know. I sign up with. I'm not talking about that. I, like I said, the city needs to be a city again, not just some scrap people that everyone's fighting over. You and your people can do that. You have, you have the know-how. How to make the factories run again, the streets safe, how to keep the lights on. You don't want or need scavengers and raiders picking through the rubble. You need jobs that people can hear can work. Andrew goes to say something back before she can, down points to an almost accusing finger in the direction before interrupting her. You want the brother to hear the last? You need to have a strong capital. You need the people you, to want you around. Give them the city, the stability, and you'll be unmovable. The pointing finger turns to a fist while he raises high before he announces in a grandiose tone. Well, Denver will be the jewel of Colorado, known throughout the wasteland, uh, along with the might of the brother to seal, restoring a city. And we'll have the memorial thing too, hopefully soon. Still villain representation, Andrew waits a few moments to see if Dan had any more, but as he seems to have finally run out of the words, she asks, I, I can see your point, Mr. Rivers. We've already planned to restore certain sections of the city for our own use, but I believe that what you propose goes beyond their means. Um, Dan sighs and lowers his fist again, I know. It's not something I expect to happen in the next few years, but it could take a decade. It takes another swing and goes on, but it's something that can be achieved with the right effort, and I'm willing to work for it if you have me. The brother can keep all the fancy tech if you can keep Colorado safe, don't hide away from the world, and help the people here. Inside her helmet, Andrew ponders his final words for a moment before placing a hand on Dan's shoulders. Well, very well, Dan. You can help before, and I believe you'll be helped still. I think your input will be needed in the coming months and years, Andrew says. The uh, trader's smile gets even wider as he makes finger guns for a moment, catches himself, and does his best salute before saying, Keep your float, as promised. Voice of the people. As we're slowly just trying to drain them all their resources, their manpower. Uh, 12,000, these guys are what? At 39,000. That's a lot of divisions. We're holding out pretty decently. We should probably improve our actual infantry divisions by adding more, um, uh, like, support companies and whatnot, too. Man, we're just gaining a crap ton of RXP, though. Eh, maybe not that much. Maybe not. I'll Rick's task. Making our way down the hallway to the underground uh, sections of the Union Station, Andrew steps in front of the door to the scribe's main la uh, lab, pressing her hand against the access button. And stepping through, she sees Ulrich muttering to himself as he rapidly taps the keys at his terminal. <clears throat> Harder work than I think I've ever seen you, Proctor. Andrew says to get his attention. It is a trick as he almost jumps out of his chair and quickly stands to salute. Paladin, uh, I mean, Elder, apologies, I didn't see you come in. Elder, uh, Elric blurts out. Andrew raises an eyebrow in surprise. This is also the fastest she's seen in the Age Man movie as well. With a quick gesture to discuss or dismiss a salute as she smiles and says, I'm not here to reprimand you, Proctor, just a check in on what your current project is. You finally have access to Denver's vast secrets, so I know it's been 
I know it's what you've been looking forward to since we last lost cells. Our nods quickly and gestures for her to come over to his side of the terminal. Yeah, that was the reason why I joined the expedition. I, the proctor, averts his gaze a little before going on. I apologize for my previous attitude, Elder. To be honest, I didn't believe we would accomplish much after our retreat from this place. Andrew nods with face or smile, faltering a little before replying. The sacrifices of the brothers who gave us this opportunity must be honored. Now, let's see what you've been working on, shall we? The map. <clears throat> Warren's location. A map of all the sites used by Warren AI. Andrew asks as she takes in the information on the terminal screen. It certainly looks like one with several bright spots highlighted across the city. Elrog nods, voice tinged with excitement as he explains, Yes, the sites we found all point towards the central location. I need to visit three, these three in particular. His finger taps the screen on the spot, site B, C, D, to find out what the hypothesis will be for site A, where the warden is actually housed. Andrew will, Andrea will consider for a moment and then asks, What do you hope to accomplish by fighting warden? These pre-war AI tend to be dangerous proctor, not to be taken lightly. Elrog's face breaks into a weary smile before it says with confidence, I will be very careful, Elder. I haven't waited this long to mess up here and now. Andrew studies her support in his face. He almost seems as if, it, like a new man with the turn of fate he's experienced. They've all been granted a second chance to do what they came all this way to accomplish, with a few pats on the back shoulder. A man's shoulder. She stands up to her full height before saying, Very well, Proctor Eldrick. I hope to hear of your success soon. Stopping towards the door in her armored boots, she takes a moment to glance back towards Elric, seeing him tapping away at his terminal once again with a complete focus, shaking her head in wonder as she steps through and closes the door behind her. We need this victory for all of us. Iron scraps. Decades of raiding and with a focus on advanced armor have allowed the Iron Alliance to acquire an impressive stockpile of resources and manufacturing instead of to repair these pieces of power armor. Old soldiers. Once again, not bad. Um, yeah, if we can do it too, why not? Old lessons, of course. The captain among the ghouls has been captured after conquest. We have no interest in wiping them out completely, and this man claims to have a valuable experience we could use. Not bad. And, of course, we'll go with Site B. Uh, the Warden Defense Network was given a number of sites scattered across Denver for its autonomous policing, built to last and full of advanced technology. Site C and D. These two sites have had the manufacturing capability to produce more of the robots needed for the Warden's purposes. Even a whole section of full of deactivated protectrons we could use. Denver's Warden. Ooh, with Warden disconnected from its network, we might be able to convince it to aid us. After all, we shouldn't turn down the extra help in pacifying the entire state. Also, studying the designs of Warden can help us in our research. National Guard Archives. Even after countless attempts, the scavengers of the former Dog City can now break into every army in and near Denver. Thankfully, even though we are ancient, they are ancient, we have general use access codes from our origins in the U.S. Army. If that doesn't work, we also have energy weapons that can melt through the locking mechanisms. Denver West Tech Facility. Not directly hit by the Great War, but close enough that the facility was a half radioactive center crater and the other half still buried underground. Using a power armor and plenty of radix, we can send our teams in to retrieve what we can find from the West Tech facility and U.S. Army Vehicle Depot. While the depot wasn't well secured, as well secured, most of what was stored in here pre war has not been looted due to the lack of fuel and great effort it would take to retrieve them from inside. Denver Consumer Industry. Refurbishing Denver's industry is a vital first step in getting the city back up and running for our program or purposes. Ruined streets. Clearing the streets of Denver allows us to transport and navigate the city center. It's said easier. Denver military industry. Uh, ooh, we get a core in Doc City. Refurbishing Denver's industry is a vital first step in gaining the city back up and running for the purposes. Scribe Industrial Insights. The level of industrialization in most pre-war cities is so far beyond what anyone in the Wasteland had been able to create. Having a scrap study these ancient sites will help us catch up. Paved roads. Rebuilding the roads in the former Hangdog territory will take time, but allow us to move faster to the central territory of Colorado. Factory Blueprints. Blueprints for special weapons used by the pre-war America found in the factories we refurbish, our scouts will make good use of them, and a muzzled city. The streets are no longer bustling with pre-war citizens, nor post-war scavengers, but now with the hum of industry and the clank of power armor boots. Denver's ours now, but if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on and see what we can do, hopefully against all of the Legion. Thanks for watching, have a great, 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 great rest of your day.